The amazing Emily Hobhouse was born on April 9, 1860, in St. Ive, United Kingdom. For the first 35 years of her life, she lived with her parents and was educated by them as well. She then moved to the United States to work as a social worker in Minnesota. Since she was a liberal and like many others, she was against of the Boer War. She judged and announced the British government's actions going into the war. The South African Boer War then started in 1899 and she became an outspoken critic of the British policy. In 1900, during the Boer War, she learned and received information on how the British Army was treating the women and children in South Africa. She wrote, quote, Poor women, who were being driven from pillar to post, needed protection and organized assistance. And from that moment, I was determined to go to South Africa in order to render assistance to them. Emily Hobhouse then formed the Relief Fund for South African Women and Children in October 1900 because of what she was told happened. She wanted to help them. Her aim was to feed, clothe, harbor, and save women and children from the Boer War, English, and other ones who were left destitute and ragged as a result of the destruction of property, the eviction of families, or other incident resulting from the military operations. But she did have a little trouble with her organization and struggled. After making the organization for South African women and children, she then went to South Africa herself to see what was actually going on and to investigate. So she was going to the concentration camps to investigate. England had huge anger towards her. They saw her as a traitor because she supposedly came to help the enemy, which wasn't really true. She came because she thought that morally and ethically war is wrong. Maybe even in it resonates today is wrong and that the poor people, especially women and children, are the ones who suffer. Emily Hobhouse arrived in Cape Town on the 27th of December in 1900. When she left England and went to Cape Town, she only knew about the concentration camps at Port Elizabeth. But Emily Hobhouse then learned that there was 34 camps there in the operation. Because there were so many camps, Emily Hobhouse wrote to Alfred Miller for help. Alfred was able to give Emily Hobhouse two railway tracks to obtain, but they were subjected to Lord Kitchener's approval. She did get approved after all, and two days after she arrived at Blowing Fortain on January 22, 1901, that concentration camp had 1,800 people and did not let women and children clean themselves or clean because the people didn't have any soap. The people running the concentration camp saw soap as a luxury when in reality it was a necessity, and Emily changed that and told them that they needed it. After visiting the concentration camps of Blow and Fortain, Emily Hobhouse also visited the camps south of Bo Blow and Fortain, including Norvospont, Hollywood North, Springfontein, Kimberley, and Orange River. Emily Hobhouse visited and helped Maeve King as well. She finished visiting the concentration camps on March 1901 and traveled back to Blow and Fortain and was in shock to what happened. She wrote down what she saw. The population had doubled and had swallowed up the results of the improvements and had been affected. Disease was on the top increase and the sight of the people made the impression of utter misery. Illness and death had left their marks on the inhabitants. Many that I had left hale and hearty, of good appearance and physical fit, had undergone such a change that I could hardly recognize them. From what she said and saw, Emily Hobhouse needed to confront the British government because they were basically dying. That's when Emily Hobhouse decided to go back to England to talk about the issues about the concentration camps in South Africa with 
the Marquis of Salisbury and his government, but not one of them was able to support her. Since they didn't listen, she wrote, The picture of apathy and impatience displayed here, which refused to lend an ear to underserved misery, contrasted sadly with the scenes of misery in South Africa, still fresh in my mind. No barbarity in South Africa was as severe as the bleak cruelty of an apathic parliament. Her book on the Boer War was written in France. Emily Hobhouse then received support from the people and that forced the government to make a committee of women headed by Miss Ellen Fawcett. Emily Hobhouse believed that the committee was biased in favor of the government's position and Emily herself was not invited. Emily Hobhouse believed that the committee was biased in favor of the government's position and Emily herself was not invited to the committee. The committee of women slash the members visited the concentration camps between August and December 1901. So they went to the camps and saw the women and children. They concluded and agreed with Emily Hophouse's original report. And the committee then recommend improvement. While that was happening, Emily Hophouse returned to South Africa and the authorities were scared of her visit. And she did not have permission to visit the concentration camps. Her ship anchored in Cape Town on Sunday 27th of October in 1901, but unfortunately was not allowed to leave, so she set up schools to help young children learn practice skills during post-South African Boer War. Emily Hobhouse then spent the next five years giving education to women and children after the war. Some time has passed, and in 1921, the people of South Africa raised 2,300 euro dollars to give to Emily Hobhouse for her much needed help. The money was mainly for her to buy a house in Cornwall and on May 18, 1921, she responded to their gift by saying, quote, I found it impossible to give expression to the feelings that overpowered me when I heard of the surprise you had, that you had prepared for me. My first impulse was not to accept any gift or otherwise to devote it to some other public end. But after having read and reread your letter, I have decided to accept your gift in the same simple and loving spirit in which it has sent to me. Emily Hubhouse went on and purchased the house. Unfortunately, Emily Hubhouse died in London on June 8, 1926. Her ashes were placed in the Women's Memorial at Blowen Fortain, and a town in Eastern Free State was named Hop House. That is how she will be remembered. She was a great person, activist, and feminist, and should be remembered forever.